infinitely small importance to me whose fault it is. I'm sorry, sir. The man who could put starch in my jabot is equally capable of putting poison in my coffee. <laughs> there, you see? I'm a laughing stock, and rightly so. Look at the cursed thing, sticking out like a barber's pole. Sink me, the thing is a disaster. <laughs> Go away, Brinker, you dreadful fellow. Ladies, your servant. Marguerite, your slave. Ah, Randy. How are you? And how is the portrait progressing? Hmm. The eyes are wrong, aren't they? And uh, is the nose all right? You know, I rather think you've missed the mouth altogether. Yes, you have. Otherwise, it's the image of her. <laughs> I think that'll be enough for today. Well, Mr. Romney, you're tired and so am I. Tired? Zone, me too. You know, dear lady, I've just been to Bath to be cured of the fatigue. And now I'm so fatigued by the cure that I, I really think I have to go back to Bath again to be cured of the fatigue. Now, what, what do you think of it? Monstrous fine, sir. Vastly becoming. Yes. Yes. Now, there's a coat that you can wear with comfort, sir. You know perfectly well I can wear nothing with comfort. Until Sir Percy says so. Where is that jackanapes? Who, sir? You, sir. Here, yeah, sir. And now tell Treadle what's, what's wrong with this coat. <laughs> Hmm. Back is admirable. The front's fair. The collar is, uh, passable. But the sleeve, Treadle. The cuff, my poor benighted friend. That, Sir Percy, is the last word in cuffs. Oh, God, I should hope so, for there should never be another oh. like him. <laughs> oh, come now, it's, it's, it's not so bad. You see, Sir Percy, His Royal Highness approved. My poor Treadle, His Royal Highness does nothing of the kind. He says it's not so bad. And nothing in the world is so bad as something which is not so bad. But suppose... No, oh, it's a crime, Treadle. Worse, a blunder. And quite, quite fatal to my reputation. Why to your reputation? Well, because all the world knows that His Royal Highness is guided by my taste. Yes, yes, yes. Percy is an expert on, on coat. And, and riches, sir. I, I'm a very wonder with the inexpressibles. Isn't that so, Treadle? Well, yes. Uh, up to a point. Zounds, Treadle, why must you be so cursed jealous? Look at that puny sleeve, that, that miserable dish rag of lace. Odds fish, looks like the lining hanging down. It was only intended for a plain cut. Plain, it's as ugly as a parson's widow. Open up your sleeve, man. Let your ruffles take the air. Let them flow, let them ripple. So that when His Royal Highness takes snuff, it will be a swallow's flight. That's it. Why, Timmy Percy, you're brainless, spineless, useless. But you do know clothes. Odds fish, that, that's something, isn't it, sir? Treadle, Treadle. Uh, yes, Your Highness. Don't forget what Sir Percy says about the sleeve. Uh, uh, a swallow's flight. Yes, Your Highness. Flight of a, of a swallow. Come along, come along, gentlemen. Do you swear to give me that paper? The moment I catch the Scarlet Pimpernel. Sounds, that name again? I've heard nothing else all day. At the club, the fight, and now here. I protest the fellow's a public nuisance. I beg your pardon, my dear. Do I intrude? No, no. This is an old uh, acquaintance, Monsieur Chauvelin, the French ambassador. My husband. Charmed, delighted, enchanted. Devilish clever race, the French. How they speak that unspeakable language of theirs defeats me. You flatter us, Sir Percy. No, no, you've got the cleverest heads in the world. The only trouble is, you all go to pieces round the neck. Round the neck? 
Yes, now look at that thing. Sink me, what a mess. Now, if you'd really like to know how to tie a cravat, I'll tell you. But it isn't easy, mind you. It takes all my brains. I'm sure it would. <laughs> yes. Well, now look here. Well, you see, first of all, the thing goes twice round the neck. And then the front folds back to allow the back to come to the front. And otherwise, the front would be all behind uh, as it was before. Percy, what are you talking about? You don't follow me, my dear? That's exactly what I say. It, it takes brains, doesn't it? One can see that. <laughs> yes, of course. Good day, Lady Blake. Oh, no, no, don't go. You and my wife must have so much to say to each other. We have. But then I promised myself a little tete-a-tete -tete with Lady Blakeney at Lord Grenville's ball tomorrow night. Good. Tomorrow night, then. But before you go, you must hear my verse about that cursed Pimpernel fellow. You'll love it. Listen. They seek him here. They seek him there. Those Frenchies seek him everywhere. Is he in heaven? Is he in hell? That demmed elusive Pimpernel. Delightful. What? <laughs> Especially that, uh, that line, those Frenchies seek him everywhere. Yes, I like that too. Because, you see, I hear that they do. And that gives the line a sort of something uh, that sort of gives it a, uh, a something, uh, 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 if I make myself clear. Clear as crystal. <laughs> Good day, my dear Sir Press. Bonjour, monsieur, as the French say. What? <laughs> Bonjour! <laughs> Magnificent fight this afternoon, my dear. Get that fellow Mendoza's got quick ears. In the tenth round, when Jackson had him down, I shouted, Get up, Mendoza! And damn me, he did. And sink me, he won. Do you think Andrew Fuchs might be the Scarlet Pimpernel? Andrew? Never. He couldn't hit a ball at Eton. Why? What's your interest in the Scarlet Pimpernel? No more than any other woman's. We'd all like to know who he is. So would your friend Chauvelin, I wager. What makes you say that? Well, isn't that what he's here for? Did he tell you? Why should he? Well, why not? Mind you, the man's clever. But a fellow who can't even tie his own cravat isn't likely to put a noose round the Pimpernel's neck, is he? Really, Percy? Can you never rise above trivialities? Can't rise above anything more than three syllables, my dear. Never could. Nonsense. You were a man once. A man a woman could look up to. Could turn to in trouble.